Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Patricia Leonard, and I am your host for this Hello Self podcast. Our goal in Hello Self podcast is to help you get those dreams and goals off your Sunday shelf and turn your can'ts into cans and your dreams into plans. You know, I bet some of you out there are asking yourself today, what is my purpose? What is my passion? You know, I've been thinking about retiring. How does one know when they're going to retire? What is it you want to do next in your life? We all have a million questions about where we are, what we're going to do, and what our purpose is. And what Hello Self is really about is helping you clarify some aspects of those. And I'm so excited about my guest today, Rick Simpson from Indiana. He's a corporate professional. He's got a background in staff leadership, uh, staff development. Um, Distribution is one of his uh, uh, core corporate background uh, skills. And he also has done some project management. I want Rick to just share a little bit about his life and career journey and We'll stop periodically and just check in to see maybe some of the things that um, stood out in his career that would really help you or that stood out in his life. Because I believe that in everybody's story, there are many gifts and glorious givings that you can take with you. It might even create a hello self moment for you. Thank you so much for being here, Rick, and I'm going to turn it over to you now and just share whatever your story is. We'd love to hear it. Okay, well, it's great uh, being with you this morning, and let me just start out in the beginning. Um, I was born in 1957 in rural Indiana, um, in a, born into a very poor family. Um, I can remember growing up, I didn't have a lot of social interaction outside of the family. Um, And I went to a, just a little country elementary school. Um, Then when I went into middle school and high school, I rode a bus several miles to um, a little town called North Fernand, but uh, it, um, and that's kind of where some of my social skills really matured. And let me say, even as a, as a younger uh, child, I don't even think we went on vacations. I don't ever remember going on a summer vacation. So I was very, I'm not gonna say protected, but very sheltered from a lot of social exposure. May I just um, intercept one thing here, sure. Rick? I'd like to tell my audience because I can't stand back and not uh, get involved in this. This happens to be my brother, and his journey is something that I am excited. So I'll probably jump in. And so I just wanted to tell you that ahead of time. Okay, Rick, go on. (laughs) Okay. So um, at any rate, um, my childhood was from a very poor family uh, with not a lot of worldly exposure. Um, I did go in high school. I went two years. They had a program to a technical school. Mm. And I studied electronics, so I really didn't have a career goal, but I thought electronics would be a good field to get into. Absolutely. Um, I had just turned 18 when I graduated, um, and I uh, would look for a job because I wasn't sure how to really break into the electronics field, but I knew I needed to work. So I got a job at a little manufacturing uh, company in a town called Seymour, which wasn't too far from from where I lived as as a child. And my younger sister actually lived there, so I had a place to stay while I worked. Um, I went to work and my first duties were in production. Well, it didn't take me very long to learn that I wasn't a production kind of guy. There was an opening in the warehouse, so I went into the warehouse and that's really where my career 
ultimately took me, but it started there. A uh, couple of years after I got there, um, I got to be the shipping supervisor and got married about the same time, married fairly young. I think I was uh, 20 or 21. And then a couple of years after that, we had our first child. So I started a family fairly early. Um, but from the shipping supervisor, uh, I moved into the transportation department. Uh, from there, I moved into some production planning, um, more warehousing. Um, ultimately, what I ended up was director of logistics in this company. And um, um, when, I, when I left in uh, 2017, that was the title that I held. Uh, the company went through several mergers, and every time there was a merger, there was a new upper management staff, and I had new bosses and a new set of goals uh, to learn and to deal with, and um, um, that's, that's pretty much how my career went together. Um, there wasn't a lot of planning on my part. Uh, it, just kind of, uh, it just kind of happened. Well, this is interesting. You say there wasn't much planning on your part, but you went from uh, one from coming in as a production person, and then you said I went into shipping and receiving. You went into a lot of different areas. Were you thinking about the diversity of those areas and? Uh, you said there wasn't much planning, but it's very interesting to watch this trajectory is that it's laying the groundwork for project management, some things that you did later. Uh, it was laying the groundwork. What made you or did you ask for these roles or how did you get these roles? Because it is a growth plan. Well, um, you know, it wasn't that I went after them. They kind of came after me in speaking. So there was a different power that was kind of controlling things. Uh, what I did do was I was very open to opportunities. Uh, I was always a whatever it takes kind of guy to get something done. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I just made myself available uh, for those opportunities that, as they came up. Mm -hmm. And we'll probably talk about it a little later in the podcast, but I had some mentors or sponsors that helped guide me uh, along the way. There again, it wasn't so much I reached out to them, but um, our paths crossed and it just happened to work out. And, and really those sponsors or mentors kind of helped guide me. Mm -hmm. Very key in organizations uh, in, in our growth process because people usually see our talents before we even see our own talents. And even though a lot of people would say they plan their career, I think you mentioned one thing that is so key in um, choosing and uh, deciding to sit down and have a mentor or a coach. And a lot of corporations are starting to create uh, positions that are actually called mentors because we are now facing a blending workforce where the younger are coming in and they finally understood that is very important for um, those in the corporation. But there, you uh, mentors saw this and evidently they saw your own talent. Would you agree that most people don't see their own capability or talent? And you probably experienced this in your own staff development because you were a mentor too. Yes. Um, you know, I really didn't see far enough ahead to see the end game where it was heading. Um, kind of living in the moment and just taking uh, advantage of opportunities as they came up. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things with the different uh owners of the company, it helped me develop some skills in how to read people. It taught me to listen and understand what's going on, pay attention to what's going on around me and um, how I needed to, you know, um, perception of you is reality to them. 
So I always wanted to um, make myself be perceived as you know a good employee, someone that was easy to work with, uh, somebody they could count on. They only had to tell me how to do things once, um, and then the you know the, that perception to them became reality, and um, you know that that helped me uh, take advantage of those sponsors or those mentors. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened in your uh, vertical growth. Even though you said I did not do much formal planning of my vertical growth, but your mentors saw that and they put a plan together because this is directly, I mean, when I'm hearing what you're saying about moving from production through all transportation, production planning, shipping, those are all part. And you were in a distribution organization, right? Yes, at that and time. And those yes. are all key elements of a distribution <clears throat> organization. Um, so let I'm going to ask you, and this is really personal uh, for you to look at yourself, your own perception of yourself. What do you think are the three key leadership skills that you were exhibiting, even though you may not have thought of it at that time? What do you think? their perception of your three leadership uh, skills were? Well, um, this may not be a leadership skill, but I it's always okay. listen. Whatever, yeah. I always listen. And I didn't, you know, I didn't try to dominate the conversation. I'd listen to what I was being, um, you know, told or, or was, you know, put up there. The other thing too is, um, I think one of my skills, and I can remember people commenting on it, everybody would come in just mad and, you know, if, it, and I would always calm them down so we could take a, a volatile situation and calm it down. And everybody was talking by the time, you know, we left the room. So the ability to control that. The other ability, the, the skill that I think I had to tell me was to be able to read, I think you've heard it said, read the room. Well, you read the people and you read the room. Uh, you never throw anybody under the bus in those meetings where the CEO or the president is in, but you find a way to get your, your point across. Um, the other thing in, in leadership with people is um, make them feel important because you listen to them and you take their comments and um, if they, if they come up with an idea and you think they can handle it, let them run with it. Let them take their idea and execute it and, and you know, bring together whatever it was the, the, the situation was. So um, my ability to be in a meeting with line workers all the way up to the CEO of the company. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I could temper how I was in that meeting with whatever audience I had. Mm -hmm. And would you say that these are key skills in any level of the organization you're in, regardless of your title? Would you say that these things that you just, empowerment, you talked about empowerment, empowering the person to take their ideas and implement them or at least test them out. You talked about effective communication. You talked about uh, awareness and listening. I think that was two of the things that uh, calming the room down or calming the situation down is bringing it into some kind of perspective and taking the emotions out of it. Would you say that those are key regardless of what level you're in? Even if you're in a production role or if you're in a CEO role, are those some key things that are important in our corporations today? I think so. Um... You know, they're all, no, you know, you, you got to remember, I attained a pretty high level without a college degree, mm -hmm. uh, with nothing more than a couple of years of technical school in electronics that had nothing to do with distribution, really, at that time. So, um, you know, they were able, they being upper management and my mentors and sponsors or whatever, um, to look beyond the point that I didn't have a lot of experience. I didn't have a lot of education. 
but I had the skills to manage and work with people to get things done. Whether it's the, you know, cause I reported to, you know, from shipping supervisors when I first started to the CEO, to two or three different presidents of the company. So, um, you know, you, you got to manage those people. You got to manage your boss. You got to manage the CEO and you got to manage the president and all that. Mm -hmm. And um, that was a skill that I wasn't born with. I don't think maybe I was, but I definitely didn't, that didn't get developed in my younger years. That was something that came up once I got out into the workforce. And, you know, um, I think you bring up a great point for recruiters and people, whether it's a small business, a large business, maybe sometimes we look for the wrong things when we're recruiting people to be part of our workforce. It takes a combination of what you just mentioned. Education is a piece of the puzzle, but it is not the puzzle. And I think sometimes we have in corporations, because in my coaching, these are things that I've found in the 25 years that I've been coaching individuals on career transition at every level. And I think that some of the things that I have found is it's much more about these human skills that you are talking about than just the actual technical skills or the education verbiage. Now, I'm not saying those aren't important to understand, but it takes the core person to have a passion for doing well and relating to others, giving other people. So a lot of it is about building relationships. Would you agree with that? Well, let me tell you a couple of stories that I personally went through in my career. Um, there was a girl that worked for me. She was actually a customer service rep and um, she was kind of my assistant for a while, but the customer service manager position came open and um, she didn't have any kind of college degree associate anything. Uh, she actually was a stay at home mom until she got a divorce and she had to get out on her own uh, to provide for her two kids. Right. And, um, I wanted to give her the opportunity for this customer service manager's position. Well, I, I met with a lot of resistance with upper management. I almost had to lay my job on the line for them to allow me to do that. Well, it, I, I knew that she had the, the skills and there were some things that, you know, she had to work on, but I helped her with that. Um, and when I retired, she was actually the one that they leaned on uh, whenever I left for questions and and for things. So that was one where um, y y I saw her ability, even though on paper, it didn't, you know, no experience uh, at all. Mm -hmm. The other one was uh, when I opened a warehouse in California, the guy that I hired to run the warehouse uh, had warehouse experience at a lower level, uh, but didn't have a college degree was actually in a band in the 70s and moved to California from, I think, Ohio. Um, <laughs> no, it was New Jersey, he lived in New Jersey. But me and the HR guy, the HR guy wanted to hire somebody with a lot of paperwork and I wanted to hire Bill. And I went um, to my boss and I said, hey, uh, me and John have a problem. I want to hire Bill and here's why. So they let me hire Bill and that, the return on that was just phenomenal. So there was two specific instances during my career where I had to really lay myself out there uh, to bring in people that I knew could do a good job. But if you were looking at them from paper, nope, we don't want them. Mm -hmm. I, I think those are, uh, wow, so such impactful things that leadership can do in organizations is actually it's a mentoring, which you mentioned earlier, it's a mentoring kind of thing, but it's even more than that. Like you said, sometimes I laid my own career on the line and said, I'll bet on this person that they'll be exactly what we need. And uh, speaking up to upper management in a way that is not um, uh, non-productive, it actually helps them to begin to see that, yes, uh, Rick Simpson has some good, um, 
skills in understanding and developing people. Uh, you mentioned something a few minutes ago about before you retired, but before we talk about that, I wanted to ask you about, um, you opened some warehouses in a project management role, is that correct? Um, yes, we ventured out into California. Um, I forget what year it was. I think it was in 2005, 2004, mm -hmm. something like that. And uh, we went with a third party warehouse and we decided we wanted to open our own warehouse out there. Mm -hmm. And um, so we looked for a building and that's when I hired Bill to run it, mm -hmm. to set up the warehouse and run it. And so that was a project that um, uh, had to submit a budget for. Um, had to lay out, you know, how the staffing would be. Um, hiring Bill was the first part of that staffing. And uh, I can remember that we had had a bad experience with a third party provider out there. And the CEO of the company uh, wasn't real happy about it. And that was kind of really laying my job on the line there, opening that warehouse. And when we got it done and we were shipping out of the new warehouse, mm -hmm. I remember George saying, it's all done. It's like, well, I never even noticed anything was going on. And that's when I knew that it was a success mm -hmm. because nobody else in the organization, there was no hiccups. There was no misshipments. It was a very smooth transition from a third party that had some problems to our own facility and that transition, everything. And we came in under budget, which, you know, the, they, everybody liked that. So, but the, that, that's true. And, and I think we opened that warehouse in 07 or 08. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's something that you didn't say, but I'm going to say you bet on other people all the time and you stepped in and helped them. But you bet on yourself at that point and I can do this because you did not have the skills, but you approached the CEO that said you were interested in doing that position, right? And taking that um, project on. Well, yes, but that was kind of under my umbrella and wheelhouse anyway. So that, that should have been my project anyway. Right. However, yeah. had you ever uh, uh, dealt with mergers or anything like that with getting facilities? No. So you bet on yourself that even though I don't know how to do it, I know distribution and I can set it up. And I think that's another big thing that not only believing in people is a great leadership um, aspect, <clears throat> but believing in ourselves and just stepping up to the project that's at hand and helping the organization go through that. And like you said, you made money, you saved money. Well, the, 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 the other thing too is, is to, I like, I would always surround myself with people that were under me, with people that were smarter than me. Mm -hmm. I, I never feared bringing in somebody that I felt like um, could really take my job over at any time mm -hmm. and, and run with it. So the girl that I moved up to customer service manager, uh, in a lot of ways, she was smarter than I was. And Bill, so you surround yourself with good people and then you give them um, chances to do things and you let them go. Mm -hmm. And I think that basically we all want something, someone to believe in us. And when they do believe in us, we'll step up and do our very best. And that's just an example of your story of what you've done. Um, in every case with your mentors, you haven't let them down. Um, I wanted to say something because we may have some people on this podcast that is uh, thinking about uh, changing jobs or retirement, specifically retirement. And I wanted to ask you, what was your, or one of your hello self moments that said, I think it's time to retire. So what was that hello self moment? In all of our, in each of our lives, we have uh, a nudge or something that says, okay, I think it's time. And sometimes we don't listen and we're not very happy and we have regrets later on. So I'd like to know a little bit more about what was your hello self moment? I mean, you've had a great career. 
You help the organization a lot in the work you've done and individuals in their own career. So when you were ready to, I'd like to hear what was that Hello Self moment and where have you taken it since then? Well, I, I may jump around here just a little bit and yeah, explain that's good. it, but, uh, but um, probably a year and a half before I actually retired, I started looking at it. And the first thing I looked at was financial. Mm -hmm. From a financial standpoint, uh, you know, what, where was I and how would I handle the financial end of it? Mm -hmm. um, so there was, uh, I mean, I'd work on it a couple of times every week. I'd look at the numbers and I'd think about, visualize, okay, how's this all going to go down? You know, how does it happen? Um, and so right before, I think I said I retired in 2017 about three or four months before I actually gave my notice, the hello self moment that said it's time was I was kind of evaluating myself and I realized that it had gotten to a point and we all know that the corporate world is very political and um, it can be and it gets, it seemed like it just kept getting more and more political uh, the longer I worked. But my hello self moment was when I realized my personality is changing. Rick Simpson is changing the way I approach people, the way I talk to my boss, um, my satisfaction level. I was becoming somebody different. Mm -hmm. And there was um, a supervisor that I worked with for a number of years. He had retired three or four years before me. And I talked to him one, and I said, Tom, how did you know it was time? And he was quiet for a couple of seconds and he looked at me and he said, you'll just know. Interesting. Uh, so my wife wasn't too thrilled about it and it scared her a little bit. Of course, I had went through the numbers and I knew financially it was okay. And here's where I jump around a little bit. The other thing was I had worked there 42 years and um, it was almost 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I was on. Now, yes, I took vacation, but you still got calls and you still had to answer emails. Sure. So the switch had never been turned off in almost 42 years. Um, and I always did what I was supposed to do. I was always, um, you know, upper management would know that when a situation come up, you know, how I would handle it. And it was to that, and Tom's right, you, I just knew, but the, but the key was realizing that I was changing. Mm -hmm. And um, then once I retired, I didn't have a plan other than uh, to work for a local auto company that I'd bought several new cars from, the dealership, and drive for them which um, I retired on June the 30th and I was driving like two weeks later on I think July the 11th or 12th or something like that. Um, and up until recently, that kept me busy three to four days a week. Uh, and when you retire, you, you gotta have something to go to because if mm, you just go important. from being on 24 seven to all of a sudden nothing, um, mm -hmm. that's a big jolt for your, yeah. your mental, and your physical body. And so I've had five years now to kind of transition and I'm taking things a little slower now, but um, yeah. Yeah, very interesting. I think it's interesting that your, um, your manager before who had retired said, you will know. And I think sometimes people say, oh, I don't believe that. But almost every case in people that in individuals that I have worked with at a retirement age or thinking about it, um, they just knew. I had a client that was a successful insurance agent with two agencies and he was 50 years old and he came to me and he said, I've got two successful businesses going, but I'm ready for something else. I, I just... I've been doing this insurance for 30 years and I'm ready for something else. But he did not know what 
He did not know what. So we don't always have to know exactly what is next, right? Right. That you plan something to occupy the time. <clears throat> I always, I often uh, joke with Rick about once he got his daughter's house up and his son's cars polished and his lawn mowed three times, he finally said, okay, I think I'm ready to drive for this dealership. And has that been a rewarding experience driving for the dealership? Um, yes, you know, um, people are just an accumulation of the other people they meet and their experiences. Yes. And I had a lot of that in the corporate world and going through the company, but when I left that, the same thing happened with drivers that I drove with. Uh, you know, you, you continue to expand socially uh, at a little different level. And of course, you know, I didn't have to worry about conference calls and I didn't have to worry about <laughs> replying to emails. All I had to worry about was, you know, driving and, and, and you know, people's personalities are different and you deal with them. And I, I remember this one guy, he, he wanted to hurry up and get there and hurry up and get back. And if I was in the lead, he'd be calling me, is that a little faster you're going to drive? And I'd say, Jerry, you know, I'm driving. If you in that big of a hurry, just go ahead and pass me. Yeah. Uh, keeping that calm whenever he was really excited. A lot of times he would pass me and, and I'd, you know, catch up to him later. But so the social experiences and the learning and dealing with people has gone on. And the other thing that um, I like about it is I have more time to pay attention ah. just to what's going on around me. Yeah, that's a very important factor, I think. Um, I, I put out something on uh, social media yesterday is uh, pay attention to who you are and what you're doing and then dance with the distractions as if no one's watching. So just dance with them. You don't have to get involved in all the distractions, but what's going on with you is, a, is one of the key things. So is there anything that you would like to say in closing, because this has been absolutely fantastic. And I'm sure our, our watchers, our audience, our podcasters, are exciting, excited, and um, we'll put a little bit of blurb out there about you. But um, he's retired, so he's not—he's not, he's not going to create a website for you to bother him now and phone uh, phone locations or anything like that. He's uh, for any of you who know him. He told you he's from Seymour, Indiana. So if there's anybody there that wants to talk to him, I'm sure he'd be open to that. But today, it wasn't about linking a business. It's about telling a story. And I just want to thank you so much. Is there anything else you'd like to say in closing, Rick? No, you know, just like we had said before, pay attention, listen, uh, try to remain calm when everything else is, you know, going to pot. Right. And um, um, just be open to new things. And don't be afraid to uh, take a little bit of a chance, mm. um, get out of your comfort zone occasionally and believe in people. There's a lot of bad people out there, but there's a whole bunch of good people too. Mm -hmm. Very good, a very great way to close in um, this journey of your specific career, but just as advice to others out there, very good closing. Thank you so much. And thank all of you for listening today. And I hope that at least one thing that Rick has shared um, helps you take the next step and get your dreams and goals off that someday shelf, or if it's retirement, to choose retirement and then look at how am I going to use my retirement? So take a, a little thought about your own self and see what the nudges might be saying to you as hello self next steps. Thank you so much for being here. This is Patricia Leonard, your host of Hello Self Podcast.
Thank you for joining Hello Self today and may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.